to my to the council, ask them to pray. I told you last Sunday that maybe I'd be able to share with you that the Lord began to speak to me that in the days to come I would be facing a, a situation that dealt with suicide. And the Lord began to stir my heart in a heavy way. I'm talking about that that changes your life, that, that changes your route, your routine. Since that day, I can I can tell you of several instances, but I sense that someone is here this morning who's been contemplating taking your own life. And I need I need you to hear with your spirit ears this morning. I need you to hear deep in your heart. That there's hope in Christ. There's hope in Christ. Any voice, any influence that will cause you to consider suicide is not of God. It is, it is demonic. He is the father of lies. I'm talking about the devil himself. Is the father of lies and those spirits, those spirits of suicide will come and try to trick and try to convince. That's why a lot of people who commit suicide are under the influence because he can't convince them to take their life until they get under the influence. See, and their decision making process is altered. What a dangerous, dangerous place to be. I want everybody to bow your head. I want everybody to bow your head. And I want us to pray. Before we pray, if you're here and you have thoughts, suicide thoughts, no one's looking around, you can just raise your hand and let me confirm what the Holy Spirit is speaking in me. Just raise your hand. Anybody? I want you to pray with me all over this house. That whatever this weakening has been about whatever this season has been about the last 10 days. That God would minister to lives. I want you to pray with me that today in this service, someone would find a reason and someone would find the courage to surrender their life to Jesus Christ. To live and not die. Would you pray with me, Father? We make the decision to live. We make the decision to pursue you. You come that we might have life. And I pray over every individual, every young person, every mom, dad, whoever, whoever might have ever considered it. Father, we come against that spirit of suicide. I come against that demonic influence. And I say to you, cease. In Jesus' name. I say to you, be gone. In Jesus' name. To flee. Now, Father, we praise you. Your word said that we would draw nigh to you. That you would draw nigh to us. And if we resist the enemy, you said that he would flee. Now, Father, we resist the enemy by praising you. We glorify your name. So we come against every thought of suicide. If I come to this place, And we declare that you are holy and you are worthy of all my
to escape. Yes. So the, I thank the Lord that you know, I'm looking to him now, but he was dealing with me. And he said, do you want to escape or do you want to be set free? <laughs> because if you look at it in terms of a prisoner, if a prisoner escapes, he has to look over his shoulder the rest of his life. Well, wow. they're steadily coming after him. Yeah. They're looking for him. They're chasing him. They're yeah. him. They're wanting to get him back. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're set free, you can walk out. Yeah. 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 And you can go and find your purpose and walk yeah. in your purpose. Yeah. 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 So yeah. With, do you want to escape or do you want to be set free? Yeah. Well, I yeah. praise yeah. the Lord that he has set me free. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
listen, I, you and I have to prepare our hearts to give and to tithe. I wouldn't trade tithing for nothing at all. Oh, I'm so thankful that God said, prove me. I have, and I've seen him work. Yes, sir. When you give, remember that you can give. There's an app called Givelify. It is so simple that even I can do it. And I do it. And with the Father, we pray that you bless the offering for time and the church said, Amen. Yes, God you. bless you as you bring your offering to time. Yes. I make mistakes. I so often. 
That's wrong. Sometimes that's wrong. But I'm, I'm convinced that sometimes it's God. I'm sometimes, I, sometimes I just think we, we go in the wrong direction and build in the wrong or whatever. And I don't want anybody to be distracted. I just want God to feel so. I see Bibles all over the house, and that's great. If you need to share with somebody. The book of Ezekiel, the man Ezekiel, the, the, the whole word is a great study. I love studying Daniel and Ezekiel, and I love Ezekiel chapter 37 and 38 and 39, especially we, we love reading about these visions that he saw. Well, in Ezekiel 37, chapter 1, uh, chapter 37, verse 1, rather, it talks about, and he writes about a vision that he had. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord. And set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? I'm going to stop right here so I don't have to read all of it and come back and then go back through all of it. Ezekiel was not. Uh, people say, well, okay, that wasn't real. No, it was very real. It was just spiritual instead of physical. Let us never forget that there is a spiritual realm just like there is a physical realm. Yes. We walk in the natural, but we also have a spiritual life. There's a natural life, but there, I used to, used to call it, the, you know, what's going on in the attic, you know. But really, that's not even accurate. It's going on all around us. In us, and the Holy Spirit took Ezekiel to a very real place. And he showed him this valley full of dry bones. In fact, verse 2 said they were very dry. Now, what we're going to find about this prophecy is that this vision was both prophetic, and of course, you know that the Word of God is also applicable to our lives. And sometimes there's a meaning where he's just the Word of God is just a letter to somebody. And so we look at that as the primary. That's what I call it. The primary aspect. And then we look at the secondly. Is the practical aspect where it applies to us. Or thirdly as the prophetic. And I have used that rule for most of my adult life. As, as when I read the scripture. I kind of look at it in that way. And so when I read this. I begin to see that this was a very powerful vision. And God was giving this vision to a literal Israel then. And he said they were, uh, but he was also given a prophetic vision to Israel later. And that's why he says it was, it was uh, very dry. They were dispersed for a very long time. He goes on and he says it goes to the whole house of Israel. And that just simply means it wasn't just the northern kingdom. It was both kingdoms, the northern and the southern but what does all of this mean to us? This chapter that I'm about to finish reading, this text, was not written to the church. This was written to Israel. You say, well, Pastor, how can you take it out of context? No, because the whole word is written to the church. We are the body of Christ. Yes. And he, his word is a light to our path. And so we look at this. Let's go on with verse with verse 3. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? I believe he was literally transferred out of his body. I believe this was not just a dream. I believe it, it was a vision, but I believe it was a literal transfer. I don't believe we begin to understand just how real it was. Uh, I'm telling you, God, God throughout the Word of God took people up from where they were and where they needed to go. And he showed them things and spoke to them things. And this was a powerful vision. He said again, he said to me, For prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will put sinews upon you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin, put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Now that literally happened in the nation of Israel where he brought them back. He gave them strength and it was a prophetic, it was a great prophecy. But that also applies to us. And we're going to look at it this morning and how it can and will apply to our lives. 
He said, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And suddenly, a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the muscle, Simon, the muscle and flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. I'll just insert this right quick. That's where Israel is right now. They brought back together. They still have not accepted him as the Messiah, but they will. I'm going to stop right here and tell you that there are some great prophetic things that are just over the hill yes. as we live. Yes. I heard this morning that President Biden is, is looking into supplying uh, backup, supplying support for Ukraine. Turn to somebody and say, get ready. Get ready. Because Israel is going to be attacked by an alliance of people. And I, I personally believe that one of those attacks can happen any day. And some people believe it's going to happen right after the rapture. And, and we don't know every detail, but I believe it, it, I, I believe it could happen today. And Israel turned to God because he puts a hook in the jaw of their enemy. And guess what? There'll be revival in Israel. Amen. They'll know him as Messiah. So he said, also he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, and thus says the Lord God, Come the four winds, O breath, and breathe on the slain, and that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came unto them, and they lived, and they stood up on their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones, he explains the prophecy now. You don't have to, you don't have to look it up enough on the internet. It's right here. Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say, our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord and have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up from your graves. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live. I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord God, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. And I will just say, thank you, Lord. Yes, amen. Thank you, Lord, for your prophetic word. Yes. Now, it's hard to dissect the primary and the practical and the prophetic sometimes. Because like the Trinity, these three are one. And as I studied and prayed about what to share with you today, I want to go back and base it on this, this story. And I want to talk about the possibility of revival. Amen. And we're going to leave Israel alone now. We just kind of stirred that up. And we're going to talk about the possibility of revival. Brother Spencer, I'm just going to be real honest and tell you that sometimes, sometimes in my natural mind, Pastor, sometimes I just don't know if we're going to see revival. I'm just being honest with you. Sometimes I, I look around and I say, God, I mean, I have, I'm, I'm nearly 58 years old and I have spent my adult life begging people to trust Jesus and most people turn a deaf ear to our preaching. Yeah, that's right. When it comes to the baptism of the Holy Ghost, most people don't want the Holy Ghost. Now you, you can be offended at me, but you, the best thing you can do is just pray for it. Uh -huh. right. I'm, I'm just here to tell you, some people want the Holy Ghost, but they want it their way. You see? Some people don't. Some people, some people don't want it. So sometimes I get discouraged, and sometimes I have to, daily I have to pray, God, renew my vision. Renew my faith. I need to know, I need to believe that there's not just the possibility of revival, but there is a probability of revival. That God, you're going to move in these last days. Now I'll be honest with you. I don't I don't push a lot anymore about revival within our government and revival in DC. Because I'm here to tell you they our government is full of demonics, it's full of of of, of 
people that have been uh, turned over to a reprobate. Now God can do anything. Yes. Nothing's too big for God. But we need to pray for revival in the church. Yes. Yes. We need revival in Fort Payne, Alabama. Yes. We need revival in Fort Payne Church of God. Yes. Do where when people feel and hear the word of God and they feel conviction out of it, that people yes. will, will turn their lives over to God and surrender to God. And it's just been a long time since I've seen somebody give in and just surrender and say, Lord, transform my life. Take hold of me and save me and sanctify my life. Fill me with the Spirit and use me. Yes. Yet I know it can happen. Yes. So when I consider revival, I begin to think about this text. The Lord began to show me a I hesitate to use the word formula, but for lack of a better term, I'm, term I'm going to use the word formula or a recipe for revival. When you study these 14 verses that I put here, the recipe is simple. You, you have the preaching of the word. You have the prayer of God's servant. And then you have the power of the Holy Spirit. If you want to break that down into category, break it down into uh, a three-point sermon, you can see that first he preached. In fact, his spirit Lord said, prophesy. Preach. Prophesy all the message. Secondly, is we hear this prayer as he prayed and sought God. And then we see a mighty move of the Holy Spirit. So we move prophetic out, we move primary out, and we look at practical. And we say, Lord, what is it? What, what will it take to have revival in the body of Christ? Well, it's going to take, it's going to take preaching the truth. Amen. 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 It's going to take preaching the word of God. Oh, yes. I don't want to spend a lot of time here, but I'll tell you we live in a different time than they did even 15, 60 years ago when a lot of people that came to church didn't have access to the Word of God. I still believe in the power of preaching, the preaching of the cross, and the parish foolishness, as we just say, the power of God. And I still believe that we need anointed preaching. But folks, I'm here to tell somebody, listen, listen from a concerned shepherd. If what you're getting from the Word is only on Sunday morning, you're in trouble. So you're not going to make it. It's not enough of the word. You and I personally need to read. You and I personally need to study. As I begin to pray and ask the Lord to show me what to say and what not to say, I begin to realize that when I think of what it takes to have revival, that is the preaching of the word. It's not always the emphasis on preaching. The emphasis is on the word. See, everybody here has got access to the Word through your cell phones and through your uh, devices, and we've all got Bibles. You know, the, the average is way on up. You know, the only thing, it's like seven or eight per home in the United States that we have Bibles. Wow. And so it's the preaching of the Word, but it is the Word that brings the opportunity for the Holy Spirit to yeah. work. I'm concerned because if some people want the Holy Spirit to touch them based on something that happened 32 years ago or something that happened even two weeks ago. Listen, the, the Holy Spirit wants to touch you based on what you're reading, what you hear. When you read the Word of God, the Holy Spirit will touch you. Have you read it again? He'll speak to you. It's amazing how the Holy Spirit speaks. When you begin to read the Word of God, I cannot overemphasize the the preaching of the word and the word when it comes to revival. And then there's prayer. We talked about Wednesday night, the characteristics of a healthy church. And, you know, we're a healthy church. We, we need to be healthier. Right. But we're a healthy church just to have this congregation on Sunday morning. Yeah. A lot of churches are struggling just to have anybody come. I thank God for the Fort Payne Church of God. But if we're going to be a healthy church, we talked about this Wednesday night. We talked about sound doctrine. And we talked about prayer and evangelism. Why? Because prayer and evangelism are forever connected. We talked about uh, fellowship and worship. 
Why? Because worship is having fellowship with God. Fellowship is having fellowship with another. Worship is having fellowship with God. And then we, we begin to talk about evangelism and prayer. There's no evangelism without prayer. Come on. Amen. Come on. On a Sunday morning, if I could tell you one of the greatest urgent needs that this local body has, it's going to be about prayer. It's hard to get people to pray. It's hard to get people to pray. Pastor, you don't know how much I pray. I'm going to tell you, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. It'll bring change into your life. It'll bring change into your life. It will produce fellowship. It will produce worship. So as we get back to the text, it's this. We, we need the word and we need prayer to allow the Holy Ghost to breathe upon dead, dry bones. And that's what we need. When I read Ezekiel 37, I don't care to tell you. I, 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 I read it and I, I, I read it not necessarily and not always in a historical point, I want God to do that here. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If He breathed upon dry bones then, He can do it today. Amen. Amen. I mean, He can raise up an entire county, an entire community. I do stuff, and I go back and I look at the Great Awakening and the Great Revivals of old, and it talks about two and three thousand people being saved. It talks about people standing up on on stumps and preaching the word of God. They didn't have PA systems. They didn't have cassette tapes. They didn't have uh, any kind of tension or anything. And they preached and people fell under conviction and great revival was born out of that. But we can't just go on thinking about the past. We have to look into the future, amen, and say, Lord, we need revival today. I wonder sometimes what the great revival that we're praying for, I wonder what it's going to look like. So I've really been praying this week about these three points. Well, as I was praying about preaching the word, I got, anybody ever got hung up in the spirit? Anybody ever got hung up where you can't go any farther? Yes, sir. So I began to ask the Lord they, several days ago. I said, talk to me about this word that you won't preach. Because folks, we can have Bible studies. Listen. I am not discounting one word of this book. I believe we need to preach it, teach it, memorize it. Amen. We need to, we need to stay in it. Oh. But the Lord began to speak to me about a prophetic word. Some people are afraid of a prophetic word. I'm glad, I'm glad Ezekiel wasn't afraid of a prophetic Amen. word. I know we live in a day where there is prophetic and pathetic. Amen. I know we live in a day where you don't always know who to trust, but I'm going to tell you something. You hear me? I trust God. Yes. Amen. 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 I trust Him. We need to get our eyes off of people and trust God. Brother Rick, I was here this morning and told about what a powerful testimony you told earlier about uh, how that you were in a restaurant and God spoke to you about a man. And I'm going to tell you, it takes a lot of courage. Yes, sir. To do what you did. Amen. You gotta know that you know that you know that you need to know. <laughs> you gotta know for sure yes. that it's God. And as the man walked by, he reached out, touched him, and spoke a very specific prophetic word to him. Even telling him that he had been shot, telling him he'd been in gangs, and telling him, now I'm gonna tell you, God's good. Yes. And he will use these are the gifts of the Spirit. And that's the word that that man here for him to make a change. He knew the scripture. I guarantee you he could have quoted scripture to you. But he did. That's why the Bible says man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I want to tell somebody here. Quit fighting the prophetic. Amen. Stop it. Well I'm just seeing someone. Stop it. I've seen junk just like you have. But it doesn't change who God is. And I began to pray about this word. And I said, well, Lord, you told Ezekiel what to say. Why don't you tell me what to say? And he said, all right, I will. 
Praise the Lord. That's the way it works. I never get this pulpit that I don't pray and seek God for a rainbow word. Amen. I always want to preach the Bible. Yes. Always will preach the Bible. But I pray every week, God, give me a rainbow word. Give me a fresh word. Give me something that, that is a right now word. And this is what the Lord told me to tell you. That was just the introduction. <laughs> The Lord spoke to me this week very powerfully. And I want you to go with me to Romans chapter 12. When I eat, uh, let me rephrase that. When I traditionally, when I have eaten at a buffet or a homecoming, I can. I'm a little different than some people. When I put it on my plate, I eat one thing at a time. Does anybody else eat that way? I don't know why, but I, I eat all my corn. <laughs> and then I eat all my potatoes. I don't know what that is. But, but sometimes, that's the way this sermon is today. It's just going to be a few <laughs> separate little things. I'm going to share it. <laughs> In the book of Romans, chapter 12, the Lord told me to remind you today. He said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And this is what the Lord reminded me and told me that it was it was an urgent word that I needed to speak, even as Ezekiel spoke the urgent word. What I'm about to tell you, that, that the Holy Spirit told the Apostle Paul and what he wrote, it's less popular today than it was then. Some people would say, Pastor, that is not the most urgent message that we need to hear. I beg to differ. Primarily because this is what the Holy Spirit told me to tell you. He said, do not be conformed to this world. Everybody say, do not. Do not. Try not to be conformed. No. Do not be conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. We need to understand what conformity is. I was talking to Lisa early this morning about this message, and I, I said, I wish I had a big piece of Velcro. <laughs> and I wish. It, I wish I could just dress in Velcro and then have another big old sheet of Velcro the other side of Velcro. How, see, how, how many of you know the story? The man that invented Velcro invented it because of a burr he got on his britches in the pasture. You need to check out that story. He got a burr on his britches. Is that what they call them? The little sticky awesome. huckleberry. And he, and he took it off and he put it on and he took it off and he, then he became a multi-millionaire. <laughs> Amen. Anybody ever feel like the world is just latched on you? Pat, Pastor, how am I supposed to not be conformed when every day I get up and go to work in a hellhole? Preach it. How do I do this? God, how do I? You said do not conform to this world. And I have to get up every day and I have to work. And, and, we, and we could go on and on about what is going on in this world. But folks, I'm here to tell you, you can peel the Velcro off. You can peel the world off. And you can stay away. Lisa told me, I asked her as I did one up, and I said, what are your thoughts on this? She said, all I know is, is that when you pull Velcro off, you got to keep it separate. Come on. So we don't get reached up. And he said to us, come out from among me. And be you separate, says the Lord. People don't want to hear about holiness. They don't want to hear about righteous living. They don't want to hear about 
separation. They, they just want many people. And the church has been under the influence of the world. To the point that the world is no longer under the influence of the church. Amen. I challenge everybody here today. How many of you want the Holy Ghost to breathe on your life? Yes. On, on yes. Amen. Yes. Then be not conformed to the world. That's right. Now the Holy Spirit is helping you understand these areas of your life. If you're watching stuff you shouldn't watch, stop it. You're hanging out where you shouldn't hang out. Stop. It. Yes. It's really not complicated. Right. I said it's not complicated, but sometimes it's challenging. Mm -hmm. Amen. Not eating sugar is not complicated. But I'm on day 11. Just because it's complicated, just because it's challenging, doesn't mean it's complicated. Right. You just don't put it in your mouth. You cannot eat it if you don't put it in your mouth. You know, I found that out. And you and I cannot be conformed to the world if we will stay separated from the world. Lord, if we will stop acting like them, talking like them, and stop having the same attitudes as the world, God has called us to be a separate people. God's called us to act different, to look different. I believe that our attitudes need to be different. Why? Because if we can do this, then the people in the world can say, hey, I like their attitude. Hey, I like their separation. I like what, what that peace, that, that peace that they've got. And people will say once again, I, I, want, I want that peace. I want what he's got. Amen. Wow. Amen. And do not be conformed to this world. It's just a word that many times we glance over it. To conform to another's pattern. When you want to understand the word conform, I ask what do you mean? Be not conformed to the world. Think of the word comply. It's always connected with the word comply. Conform and comply. Look it up in the dictionary. It's going to be synonymous. It's going to be a part of even the definition. It means compliance. It means that you're not going to comply with what the word. We've had a great lesson. If we'll learn from it, we've had a great lesson, whether you agree or not, or whether I agree or not, we've had a great lesson in the world in the last year or two, and that is compliance. Yes. Wow. I'm just going to sit here a second. God's going to give me wisdom on what to say and what not to say. Yes. Some people are not going to comply. I've had people tell me, I'm not going to wear a well, that's your decision. People say, I'm not going to get a vaccine. That's your decision. Granted, it affects people around you, but it's still your decision. We have people in here for whatever reason. You've got every right not to comply with, with that request. But let's don't get lost there. Let's bring it over. And the, and the word says, do not be conformed with the world. The world says it's all right to cuss a little. Well, the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says not, not any word come out of your mouth. The Bible says to stay away from words that I've lost my verse. Unwholesome. Unwholesome. Uh, unwholesome. Corrupt. Thank you. The corrupt's the word I'm looking for. And so, you know what? It's up to us. We can be conformed to the world or we can not. Yeah. Pastor, the world says it's okay just, just to socially drink. Well, the, the, the word says don't give place to the devil. I've had all these discussions. We, we're not here to discuss and debate. They say, well, you can't show me in the Bible where it's going to send a man to hell to drink a beer. No, but I can show you that it might cause him to have a wreck and kill somebody. And I can show, show you that the Word of God says, be not drunk with wine, but be filled with spirit. And I can tell you that drunkards, drunkards, listen, right in the Scripture, 
I can't tell you don't give place to the devil. I can't tell you quit playing with fire. I can't tell you that uh, you, you and I do not need to be conformed to the image of the world that we transform by the renewing of our mind. And we don't need to get hung up on any of these conformities. Come on. The world says you don't have to go to church twice a year. Bless the Lord. Well, honey, the church is not far behind that. Mm -hmm. A lot of the church says you don't have to go to church but once a month. Everybody taking this with the love that's been sent? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Be not conformed to the world. That's right. We don't need to act like the world when we're on Facebook. Right. We don't need to act like the world when we're communicating one with another. Right. We don't need, and, and when you do, you need to learn from it. And that he's faithful and just to forgive us. Yes. But I'm not going to be conformed to the world. I've made up my mind. Do, I'm not going to do what they do. I'm not going to say what they say. I'm not going to wear the clothes that they wear or the lack thereof. <coughs> Amen? Amen. 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 Yo. That was just enough of an amen. <laughs> To make me preach a little bit. Right, preach, preach to us, Pastor. We live in a world of nudity. Yes. We live in a world of the lack of moderation. And I know people say, y'all always picking on the women. Well, men are very visually driven. We live in a day when you can't go to some churches because of the immodest clothing because of the lack of I, I had a woman active in the church tell us one time said well God gave it to me like that's supposed to justify her showing what God gave and I'm just here to tell you God's not within a hundred miles of that Amen. Amen. we are to present our bodies a living sacrifice yes. Holy and acceptable yes. unto God. Yes. And man, that goes for us too. Yes, amen. That's right. Amen. Conformity to our society. It's not just in young people. Young people hear my heart. I know that at a young age you feel like we don't understand. And there are things that we don't understand. But there are things that we understand. Yes, because we were just there the other day. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It's, not, it's not just young people that want to conform to the world sometimes. Amen. Come on, brother. I'm, I'm concerned about churches that are conforming to the world. That's right. Congregations. They're using the same marketing companies that the world uses. Mm -hmm. Using the same strategies. Trying to market. I've had pastors say, well, what is your, what is your target market? <laughs> oh, me. Oh. Don't get me started. I'm just, here to, I'm just here to tell you, the church is not designed after the world. Right. Amen. The church is designed by the Holy Spirit of God. Yes. We are not to be conformed to this world. Now, don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean we do everything or even anything based on tradition. Tradition will trip you up even when the tradition is right. Now, you don't have to agree with that, but I'm here to tell you that if you follow after one tradition, you get in a danger zone because you follow after other traditions. We don't dress right because of tradition. We dress right because of the Word. Amen. We live right because of the Word. We talk right because of the Word. Yes. Listen, we have to get our eyes off of the past and get our eyes on the future. And, and we can look back, and we, if we're not careful, when you look back, you just kind of move there. I mean, a rearview mirror is placed in a car for a purpose. Yeah. For you to glance. Amen? Amen. Amen. He said, well, Pastor, I, I want us to see God move the way he did back then. We can. Amen. We can. Yes, we can. If we will stay in the Word, yes. if we will preach the Word, yes. and if we will pray, 
then the Holy Spirit will breathe upon dry bones and breathe upon dead bones. I am ready to see somebody get an old-fashioned Holy Ghost experience yeah. and be born again and set free. Yeah. I'm ready to see alcoholics yeah. deliver. Yeah. I'm ready to see drug addicts deliver. Yeah. I'm ready to see demon possessed set free. Yeah. I'm with you, brother. The whole world is trying to get an escape. The whole world is trying to get an escape. It's not about a temporary escape. It's about an eternal freedom. Oh, Woo! Set you free once and for all. Yes, amen. You know what they've told me in recent days is I've been, is I've been fasting sugar. I've had people say, well, and every time I say I'm not going to preach about it, but it just seems like it ties in with what I'm saying. They say, well, how in the world can you do without sugar? Well, you just don't put it in your mouth. How can you not eat that candy bar? You don't go down the candy bar aisle. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes I just don't even go in the store. This is what they tell me. This is what I'm finding out. After about two weeks of no sugar, you know what I've found out? In the last two days, I have, whoo, I just felt the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus. I felt the cravings begin to decrease. And I no longer crave the sugar. You know what I found out about God? If you be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I'm here to tell you those cravings will go away. Yes, that craving to escape. I wouldn't drink a bottle of beer for a thousand dollars. If I put it in, I'm not, I'm not condescending, I'm not being a, a, a smarter. I'm just telling you that that was way back when Walter Atkinson used to say, I made up my mind, you throw me in a swimming pool full of whiskey and I will not swallow her until I get it. <laughs> you gotta have a made up mind. Be not conform to this world. Right. Honey, don't you know that if you go for the escape, don't you know that in 20 minutes it's gonna be worse than it is now? Right. Don't you know that tomorrow morning the escape is gonna be gone and the, the consequences are gonna be there? I know people are hurting. I know people are panicking. I know people have anxiety. I know that Jesus said, Come unto me. Yes. Oh, ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you a Yes, amen. Yes, I thank you, Lord. I wouldn't take nothing from my journey now. Amen. How do you not conform to the world, Pastor? Well, the scripture is very plain right there. It says, be transformed. <laughs> exactly. Be a transformist. I preach, we need to build a message on being a transformer. The young people know what a transformer is. God didn't call you to be a conformist. He called you to be a transformist. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. One of our problems. One of our problems. Is a lot of people got their eyes on other people. And I want everybody to hear my heart. You and I cannot transform people. We cannot change people. We cannot regenerate. We cannot that, that we cannot save people. We cannot make them just, make them right. Fact is, I'm just gonna tell you there. There's very little, if anything, that I can do personally. But I'm telling you, there's one who can. Amen. And if you'll call upon him yes. and be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. What's the renewing of your mind? Well, you just quit thinking the way you've been thinking. Amen. Quit thinking so negative. Quit thinking so critical. Quit thinking so skeptical. Quit thinking so worldly. Amen? It's stinking thinking. That's exactly right. And it, stinking thinking causes bad behavior. 
So I come here today, even as Ezekiel, to preach the word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord is be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Pastor, what do I do when I leave here today? You just start being sensitive to the Spirit of God. He'll, he'll show you. You'll be, you'll be walking along in Walmart. Or you'll be praying at home. Or you'll be in your prayer time. You'll be fasting. And you'll be driving down the road or whatever it is. And he'll speak to you. He speaks to me. He spoke to me recently about my irritability. He'll speak to you about attitudes and about actions. Look, He's not speaking to us these things so we can get loaded down with burdens and so that we can fall under the load. No. It's a convicting power of the Holy Spirit. He might have spoke to a husband in here about not loving your wife and not honoring your wife. He might have spoke to a wife about disrespecting her husband. Boy, nobody wants to hear that phrase anymore. <laughs> but yet, that's what the scripture says, isn't it? Yes. Father, I pray that you, you would speak to lives today. Lord, I don't believe there's one here that wants to be conformed to this world. We hear your word and we pray and ask you now that your Holy Spirit will breathe upon even the winds, the four winds and the four corners, meaning your Holy Spirit, your all-powerful Holy Ghost power would just breathe into this place and breathe into our lives. For we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Father, if there's one here today that is under conviction, they're not where they need to be with you, I pray that your Holy Spirit would now breathe upon them. Breathe upon a church that has great potential. Breathe upon a church, a congregation, a family. Help us see a year of recovery and not a year of backsliding. Help us to experience a year of discovery and not a year of forgetting. Help us to experience a year of your spirit. For it is our desire to be not conformed to this world, but transformed. And I believe you're going to raise up a mighty army. Yes. Yes. Stand with me.